Android was designed for phones with screens that look something like this, these sorts of dimensions. All the apps that run on your phone were more than likely also designed to run on screens with this sort of dimension. And because of that, Android tablets have always had sort of an uphill battle because they don't have screens like this. They have screens like this. And the applications you're trying to run on them might not know what to do with a screen that is this size and of this aspect ratio. So you wind up with a really big screen that really doesn't add a whole lot to the experience. Now, of course, there are apps that stretch out. That's not really the best thing they could possibly do. There are apps that actually change their layouts, though, and take advantage of that larger screen. And it has been Google's goal for a really long time now to encourage more and more apps, more and more developers, I should say, to make their apps more flexible, to have them better support tablets. Because like I said, that has been the Achilles heel of Android tablets. It's like, yeah, you've got this great big screen, but the apps you're using don't take advantage of it. So what's the point? I think for a long time, we've wanted to see Google do something, do more to push developers into this direction. We're looking at you, Instagram and Twitter and all these other applications that are really popular that don't support tablets, don't support these larger screens. Google has to do something to push them. And on July the 25th, just a few days ago, they posted a new blog post, Android Developers, googleblog.com, going over some of the things that they're doing in regard to the Play Store that I think is going to potentially mean good things are coming for these larger screen devices, whether we're talking about standard tablets, which Google has a new one, or foldables which open up into tablets which google has a new one they have a keen invested interest right now in getting this stuff right as tablets and foldables become more and more popular let's go through this blog post and let's take a look at some of the things some of the plans they have for making this experience better the experience in general better on these larger screen devices so number one refreshed app listing pages for high quality apps. So you can see this image here and we'll take a look at it more directly. Let's zoom in. This is Minecraft. So what they have here is it basically a video banner. You can see the trailer button down there. This looks really, really good in particular compared to how things look now. The current listing for Minecraft looks like this. It's this sort of dual panel thing, which is cool, but it's really messy. There's just a ton of other applications. There's not a lot of multimedia stuff going on. This looks head and shoulders better to me above where we are currently. Did you talk about this multi-column layout, which I think you can sort of see on this side, which again, is just gonna give you more stuff on screen. I think we kind of had, have a bit of that now already, but we definitely don't have that. And that is where we need to be moving to. So what is the point of this? Well, if you have basically a higher quality listing of your app with a high quality trailer and things like that, you're going to get this sort of improved layout on these larger screen devices. Number two is a really big one, ranking and quality improvements. Let's just read this. To promote high quality apps that shine on large screens, we're talking about apps that when they're on a phone look good, when you open up into the tablet mode or you put them on your tablet, they reflow their layout to better take advantage of the tablet and they look great there as well. They say, we've made several ranking changes to boost quality across play. Apps and games that adhere to our large screen quality guidelines will now be ranked higher in search and apps and games home. So if you've got an app that adheres to their policy that reflows and works better on tablets, you're actually going to be ranked higher in the search results. This could actually do something to push developers to adopting these guidelines and be better on tablets. They go on to say this helps users find apps that resize well, aren't letterboxed, and support both portrait and landscape orientations. Editor's choice and other curated collections and articles will also consider these criteria going forward, creating new featuring opportunities for optimized apps. Push them harder, spotlight the apps that have done it well, and in sort of a roundabout exclusionary way, you're sort of shaming the apps that haven't adopted these form factors as they should be. 
We've got this image here. Reports from similar devices show this app is likely to stop working on your device. This is really good stuff. Just letting users know ahead of time, hey, is this app going to work well on my Pixel Fold, on my Pixel Tablet, my Z Fold device? Maybe we're just going to know straight away if it's worth installing. Streamlined store navigation. For more seamless browsing, we've simplified our store navigation and moved to a left side navigation rail on larger screens. This looks really good. And of course, we do already have this rolling out on our devices. Really, really good stuff. How about split screen search? Lastly, they say we're excited to announce a new search experience that makes it easier to discover and compare apps within the search result page. This is really, really cool. Let's blow this up as well. So you have here what's going on. A search taking place over here. You click on one of these applications to look at it and you can see a preview of their store page without leaving your search result. All of this stuff is going to be really nice to have on these larger screen devices. It's also interesting to think about the very different approach that Google is now taking with applications on their tablets. Applications like Wise that don't have a tablet layout, instead of just stretching them across both screens, they're effectively just presenting that application to you as it would be on a normal phone screen, only slightly wider than before. Of course, you can move it to one side or the other, but for the most part, they're just leaving it as the phone app. Why are they doing this? Well, there's a couple of possible reasons. One, they might think that stretching the app might fill the screen, but it doesn't always actually lead to a better app experience. Another reason, though, might be to sort of push people, right? So, hey, if you want your app to look correct on our tablets going forward, you're going to need to build the correct layout. Hopefully that combined with the stuff I've talked about in this video does push other developers to move in that direction. Don't get me wrong, guys, it's still a long road ahead. There are so many apps that need to get with the program. A lot of them you can use PWA web apps. I'll drop a video down below showing you exactly how to do that to improve your experience. But the world would be a much better place if these apps didn't make us use PWAs and just fixed their layouts for tablets. It's about time, guys. Let me know what you think about this in the comments down below. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.